To generate images with high degree of control, this paper constructs adversarial latent autoencoders. So this paper from 9th April 2020 on archive uh, called Adversarial Latent Autoencoders from Pidhorsky, Adjeron, Dereto from Department of Computer Science and Engineering in West Virginia University, Morgantown. Um, so um, uh, we have GANs, which, you know, these generative adversarial networks, which generate best image quality. And at the same time, we have alternative approach called variational autoencoders, which uh, generate a little bit blurry images with lower quality, but with high degree of control over, over them. So you have this latent space where by smoothly moving over that latent space, where the images are encoded, uh, you, you get sort of meaningful transition from image to image and you can look for uh, features in this latent space and then you know, move into direction of, uh, I, I would like this image of a person to be smiling. I would like this image of a person to be older and, and, and so on. Uh, so you will have these two approaches, which are separate, and both have their advantages and disadvantages. So in this paper, they try to merge both of these ideas, and they create this adversarial latent autoencoder. They propose two different architectures, but um, I'm gonna just go uh, through just one. Uh, this is gonna be just quick, just spice and juice of the paper. So, uh, so firstly, you know, the, uh, what's the principle of the architecture? So here we have the image of the architecture, uh, ally architecture. Uh, and so what they do here is that they take uh, uh, some you know, noise source. They convert this noise to a latent space. From this latent space representation of the noise, they generate an image. They convert the latent noise to an image. Then they use, uh, you know, using this generated network, same as you have in the generative adversarial networks. Then they take this generated image and convert it again back to latent space. And they make sure that this latent space where they convert it to is very similar to the original noise uh, representation uh, on the latent space. And then having this latent space representation of the image, they discriminate whether it is the real or fake image. So this is this GAN approach, while you have this variational autoencoder approach on the requirement that this noise uh, representation on latent space is the same as the encoded image representation after the generation. So this is the architecture. Um, so what they do here, as I mentioned with, is this reciprocity. So they require, uh, so they have to have this requirement that the latent input to generator, uh, you know, the generator works on the latent space, is the same as the latent input to discriminator. Um, they, however, they don't uh, restrict uh, the latent distributions in any specific way. Uh, so more details in this paragraph. And now uh, they add this additional extra uh, encoding trick where they extract style information from each of the layers of their convolutional encoder network. And they uh, sort of uh, pass it as a separate latent output, uh, uh, you know, concatting it with the uh, final output of the convolutional network um, uh, sort of result. So, uh, so it, it, you can see it also in this picture. So they, this encoder works by you provide the image with the high detail and you pass it through the different conversion layers and each layer you extract style in each step you add it to the latent space and remove it from the image 
and then at the end of the of this CNN, you also extract the output as a additional vector in the latent representation. So this is the style trick. And thanks to that, uh, they can generate very high quality images. They also mentioned in the paper that they actually don't need uh, don't need as much and uh, as much data, and they don't need as as much training. But the most interesting, uh, well, also interesting part are the outputs. So here you can see the pictures where, where they can do the style, or they can modify the style, right? They can travel on the Latin space, make uh, pictures of a people older or younger. They can make them smile. And as well, uh, they uh, they also look at the reconstruction. So for example, here they have a reconstruction of Bill Gates. It's not exactly the same. Maybe, you know, there's some way to improve the reconstruction, but it's still very interesting. And it shows us that the Latin space is sort of uh, meaningful, it has some sort of meaning for a presentation. The reconstruction error is not that high and that the images are very nice, very high quality. Yeah, so that's going to be all from uh, from today. I have to run. I hope you like the uh, like the gist of the paper. Please dislike, unsubscribe, and leave uh, uh, comments. And yeah, see. You